And welcome back. Well, when there's an emergency, you call 911, but sometimes we face other crises in our life and it's not easy to know where to turn. Joining us now is the president and CEO of Impact, which provides the community with free services through their crisis call center at 211, as well as walk in mental health screenings, which is great. John is joined by Meg Kissinger. She's an investigative journalist and reporter who has championed the rights for people with mental illness after the suicides of her two siblings. And this is part of our trauma series presented to buy Impact 211 in partnership with Bader Philanthropies. Great to see you both Thanks of for being you. Thank here. you so Thank much. You. Thank you for Let's talk us. about um, trauma as it relates to mental illness. Um, it seems like it puts people at um, risk for being homeless, but it's not just the homeless population affected by trauma and mental illness. Sure. Well, um, trauma complicates everything. And so whether you have, you're predisposed to mental illness and then trauma comes along, or you experience trauma and then as a result of that, um, there's mental illness. And so it's not just homelessness, right? In extreme cases, it really wreaks havocs on a person's life and so you lose your work, you lose your relationships, um, you lose any kind of income and you find yourself um, homeless on the street. So it happens for some people. For the larger collection of people, it still impacts relationships, um, impacts your ability to be a good husband or a good wife a good parent, a good employee, and so people struggle with that kind of on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. And Meg, you, you speak about your family and your siblings. Talk a little bit about the, the mental illness that was involved and, and the trauma throughout your life that kind of led to losing two siblings. Right, so I'm from a big Irish Catholic family and um, I, I lost a sister to suicide 40 years ago and then my brother Danny uh, was 21 years ago. And others in the family have struggled with, with issues, which, you know, raises the question of genetics. You know, I think, yeah. I think for a long time, it was regarded that people with mental illness had bad parents or were bad people. And of course, we know that that's not true. It's so much of it is um, your, just your, how you're built, your genetics. So um, that's what I've really spent a lot of my career writing about what it's like in families and how you um, how you can kind of accommodate all of that and not easier said than done. Yeah, and what strikes you most about mental illness and the impact that it has? I'm sure there are so many things, mm -hmm. but you know, some people say, for example, that it affects all people regardless of class, gender, oh, yeah. whatever. But what, what's yeah. something that strikes you or maybe surprised you? You lost two siblings and then as you've investigated and mm -hmm. reported it on it your whole career. What, what has surprised me? Well, I mean, it's, it's amazing to me how little understood it really is. A lot of people conflate, as I said, either mental illness with being bad or um, they, they really are, are I, think, I think people are becoming more aware through shows like this and uh, people are coming forward and talking about their own struggles or their family struggles and that's very helpful. But uh, it, it always surprises me the lack of, of general knowledge about um, what really is a, a public health crisis and how we need mm -hmm. to really address it in a full-throated, clear-eyed way. Mm -hmm. If you're a person that um, has never experienced mental illness or had a family member or been through trauma, it's really hard to understand. So people will say, well, you know, I've been depressed before. And your version of depression is sort of feeling blue and and, and you, you sort of pull yourself up and you get mm -hmm. through it, it's not the same with trauma and with depression. And, you know, Meg talks about 40 years ago and somebody would say, well, geez, Meg, 40 years. Right. Shake it off, move on. How could something like that possibly linger that long? But it does. Mm -hmm. so, so trauma doesn't always have a, a length of time in terms of grieving or experiencing what you may experience. It may be something that almost like rests itself in your, in your body. It sounds. So I'll tell you a little story. I, I, I'm, I'm writing a book mm -hmm. uh, about my family's experience and about the mental health system. And I needed to see the police reports of the deaths of my brother and sister. Anyway, my sister died, 40, as I said, 40 years ago last June. Um, anyway, after a big struggle, I did get the police report. It was pretty traumatizing to read that. And I was talking to one of my, my older sister. She and I were having a conversation about it. And even after 40 years, it just leaves a big pall. I mean, it. it, it it takes all the energy out of you. So, you know, it's not like I think about it every minute of every day. Uh, I have many happy, exciting, fun things. Uh, but 
uh, it does stay with you forever. Yeah. Did your parents, were they open about it right away or was it something that they tried to, because that's the thing, the stigma of it is part of the pain, I think, and the yeah. trauma of mental illness. Right, I think that has, has really evolved. Uh, the quick answer is no. You know, when my sister died, it, we were not to talk about it. It was, it was taboo for a lot of reasons. Uh, and then over the years, they came to really embrace the mission of spreading the word and letting people know that um, you can be a good, loving, wonderful person and still suffer from mental illness. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. John, talk real briefly just about the screening that people can get for mental health um, if they come to see a counselor. Sure, they can either come into our office or we have people that are actually going out into the community and so we do a quick screen with people to um, find out if you have symptoms that may be connected to mental illness and then um, from there um, contact another health professional for really in-depth screening. Mm -hmm. Does it, is there a cost associated with the screening? The services at Impact are free, so it's a free service available. So, so whether everybody. it's something that people do as they walk in and visit a counselor or you go out into the community, that's free? Correct. And then they also will help guide you to a resource or a counselor to, to get the kind yeah. of care or treatment that you need. In the best scenario, we will, on the phone with you while you're in our office, help you get connected to a counselor. It's incredible. And mm -hmm. you get almost how many calls a day at Impact 211? On a average day, 500. On a busy day, 700. It's wow. unbelievable. Yeah. Incredible. Great. And Impact has created a critical condition fund for people to donate in honor of or in memory of a loved one. So you can go to the website to find out more about that. It's Impact inc.org under critical condition fund. Um, they'll have your loved one listed there then on their website. You can also call them. That number is super easy to remember. It's just 211. Thanks guys. Thank Appreciate you. Both you. Your time. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely.